أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome everybody to another one of your G2 classes um, I hope that your first week of learning has been going well for you um, and I hope today's lesson is beneficial for you all as well today inshallah so um, as always, we are going to start off our class with an opening prayer. And for that, I would like to request a student to come to the mic. So could I please ask student G2700 to unmute themselves? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you? How? I'm good. Jazakumullah for asking. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, good. Alhamdulillah. Would you please like to start off with Awud and Tasmiya and then inshallah I'll lead you into the recitation. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul walim Okay, well done. Mashallah, that was very, very nicely recited. And could you also uh, read out the English translation for us? Yes, yeah, please. Our Lord, accept from us, for you are the all-hearing, all-knowing. Well done. And that's Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 128. MashaAllah, that was very, very nice to recite it. Jazakumullah for coming to the mic today for us. Take care. Jazakumullah, thank you. Kalafin. I love it. Okay, so um, as you're already aware, uh, just before all of our classes, we have, we have an opening prayer that we go through. And the one specifically chosen for uh, the Friday class is, is a prayer from the Holy Quran. Remember, the Holy Quran has 114 chapters, okay? Um, and the prayer that we've uh, got today is actually one of the verses from Surah Al-Baqarah, which, which is chapter number two of the Holy Quran. Um, and Surah Al-Baqarah is a very, very uh, long surah. Um, it has a total of 287 verses, okay? So if you wish to um, find this dua, you can find it in Surah Al-Baqarah, which, uh, which is chapter two. Um, and it would be verse 128 that you're looking for. Okay, so this is where we've got our prayer from for today. Now, um, on Fridays, our classes are um, slightly different from uh, usual. Okay, so as always, we will always have our um, opening prayer. I will always talk to you about what we are doing today. But the special thing about the uh, Friday classes is that we have a breakout room system in place. OK, um, which I'm sure you're already aware of as well. So in today's session, just before we open up the breakout rooms, what we are going to do is I'm going to give you a quick run through of the um, of the uh, rules that you learned during the course of this week. OK, which include short and long vowels and nonation as well. All right. Um, this is just a quick uh, recap of what you've done throughout this week. And then we will open up our breakout room session. And this will be an amazing time for you to come to the mic and try to apply all the rules you know so far to your recitation. OK, and the practice text that we are going to be using for today's class is what you've gone through this week. So it is chapter 26 verse 1 to 23 you won't be re reciting all the verses but you'll be reading a couple of portions and this is a, a great time for you to ask your breakout room teacher any questions you've got if there is anything you're unsure about you can feel free to ask them okay so um don't worry if you are not called to the mic today in your breakout room sessions you will have plenty of opportunity over the next couple of weeks to be called to the mic and be given a chance to um, practice some of the things that we are learning, all right? Um, so it's very, very important that when you are called to the mic today, you include or, or apply all the rules you have learned so far, all right, to your recitation. 
And just before we proceed, can we just make sure everyone is sitting in a quiet area to eliminate any background noise or distractions? And also make sure you have signed in with the correct IDs as we are only allowed to call the correct IDs to the mic, okay? So make sure you use your time right now to check if you have signed in with the, incorrect, uh, with the correct ID. And if you think you haven't, then please rename yourself, all right? Okay, so during this week, we all went through short vowels, long vowels, and then lean, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do now is give you a quick recap, a quick revision of what you all did. So according to the short vowels, there are three short vowels that we, we should know, okay? That's fatha, dhamma, and kasra. All right. Now, fatha is a slanted stroke. It's like a diagonal stroke, and you will find it on top of a letter. So a fatha will always sit above a letter. And whenever you see a short vowel, in this case, whenever you see a fatha on top of a letter, you will prolong that letter for only one second. So a very short amount of time, one second or one count. So if you look over there, uh, over here, here we've got a burr and it's got a fatha on top. So we're going to give it a one second count timing. All right. So we're going to say b, b. Okay. And another thing to note is any letter that carries a fatha, we call it a maftuh letter. Maftuh. So in this situation now, this is going to be a maftuh ba. Okay. So a ba basically which carries a fatha. Similarly, you also went through um, kasra. Now, kasra is also a short vowel. It is, again, a slanted stroke, just like a fatha, a slanted stroke. However, this time, it's sitting below a letter. And this is how you can distinguish between a fatha and kasra. A fatha will be a slanted stroke on top of a letter, and a kasra will be a slanted stroke below a letter. And just like a short vowel fatha, you will only elongate this letter for one second or one count, all right? So in this situation here, in this example, you've got the letter b with a kasra underneath, so we know we should only give it a one second timing. So we're going to say b, b, okay? And any letter carrying a kasra underneath is known as makthur, all right? And the last type of short vowel that we went through was dhamma. Now, this one, unlike kasra and fatha, is uh, not a slanted stroke. It's, sh it's a shaped stroke. It's like a mini vowel, and you will find it on top of a letter, okay? And just like with every short vowel, with a dhamma, you will only give it a one-second timing or a one-count timing, all right? So in this situation, if you've got a bear with a dhamma on top, we're going to give it a one-second timing, and we're going to say bu, bu. Just one second, very quick timing there. And any letter that carries a dhamma is known as madmum. All right. So quick, a quick recap again. Short vowels include fatha, kasra, and dhamma. And they vary in terms of their looks. For example, fatha is a slanted stroke on top. Kasra is a slanted stroke at bottom, below a letter, and dhamma is a shaped stroke on top of a letter. And a common thing between each of these short vowels is that whenever you find any of these short vowels on top of a letter or underneath a letter, you will only give it a one second timing, hence why it's a short vowel, all right? Then we also learned about long vowels. So we've learned about one second timed um, vowels, but what about if it's slightly longer than that? So then we, are we were introduced to something known as a vertical fatha, all right? Now, as the name suggests, it's vertical. So it's sat upright, it stands upright like so. And you'll find it on top of a letter, just like a normal fatha. So we call it a vertical fatha. And rather than giving it a one second timing, we will give it a two second timing. So this is what it will look like. Um, and if you were to recite this, you're going to say, B, two seconds, all right? And a letter that carries the vertical fatha is also a maftu. Now, vertical kasra, you would have guessed it right. It's basically a kasra, but vertical. And by vertical, we mean something that stands upright, straight, right? So this is a vertical kasra. You'll find it below a letter. And again, the sound of this lasts for two seconds or two counts. So when we're reciting this, we're going to say, 
B, B, okay. And similarly, we learnt about something known as a uh, as an inverted dhamma. Okay, so this is basically a dhamma, but inverted. Now, the word inverted means upside down or flipped. So the name inverted dhamma suggests it's a dhamma, but an upside down dhamma. All right. Um, and you will find it sitting on top of a letter and it lasts for two counts as well. So when you're reciting this, you're going to say boo, boo. OK, so the difference between short and long vowels is that short vowels are prolonged for one second. And this is what they look like for kasra and dhamma. And long vowels are prolonged for two seconds or two counts. And they are vertical fatha, vertical kasra and inverted dhamma. And it's very, very important to familiarize yourself with the specific terminology that we are using here today. Because when your teacher talks to you about an inverted dhamma, you should sort of already imagine what it looks like. So when when we are talking to you about a specific rule or something, we will say fatha, we will say vertical kasra, we will say madmoom, right? So familiarize yourself with these terminologies so it's easier for you to understand what we are talking about, all right? Now, the other type of rule that you all learnt was Tanveen. And just like Fatha Kasra Dhamma, there's three different types, okay? So you've got Fatha Tain. And when we are talking about Tanveen, we are talking about double stroked letters, all right? So double stroked letters. So in this example, the first type we learnt about was Fatha Tain. Fatha Tain, all right? And Fatha Tain is two strokes of Fatha, as you can see over here but with two strokes of fathas. And whenever you see that, you will make a nasal sound for two counts or two seconds sort of. Um, and that's that's the rule for now, okay? So whenever you see a tanween, you give it a two second nasal sound. So you're gonna say, ben, ben, okay? And any letter which carries a double stroke letter, which carries as a sign of the Nveen, is known as Munavan. Munavan. Okay. Now with we've learned about Fathatain, we've learned it's two strokes of Fatha sitting on top of a letter. You also went through Kasratain. So it's two strokes of Kasra sitting underneath a letter. Remember, Kasra you will always find underneath a letter. And just like any Dunveen, we will give it a two second nasal sound. So we're gonna say bin, bin, okay, two second sound there. And this letter is known as a munavan letter. Why? Because it's got a sign of tanveen. The letter munavan indicates that there is a sign of tanveen found either on top or underneath that specific letter. Now, the third type and the last type you learned was the madain, all right? So, this is basically two strokes of dhamma on top, like, like so. Okay, these are two strokes of dhammas. And just like any Dhanveen sign, you will give it a two second or two count um, timing. All right. So this ba has got a dhamma dain on top. Remember to give it a two second or two count nasal sound. So you're going to say bun, bun. Okay. And again, munavan, that's the word to remember for any letter that is carrying a thin ring. So this is what you all went through during this week, all right? You went through fatha kasra dhamma, where you gave a one second timing. You went through vertical fatha, vertical kasra, and inverted dhamma, where you give a two second timing, hence why we give it a longer timing. And so it's given the name of long vowels. And you went through tanveen. Um, where we said it's double stroked letters and you need to give a two second nasal sound. And any letter that carries it in me is known as Munavan. All right. So this was a short, quick um, recap as to what you went through. Um, hopefully things are making sense to you from beforehand already. But if not, hopefully this helped you out a bit. 
And now um, it is time for us to open up our breakout room sessions um, so that you can spend as much time with your breakout room teachers going through the portion that has been assigned, okay? But just before we do that, um, Assalamu alaikum breakout room coordinator. Are the uh, breakout rooms ready to open? Wa alaikum assalam rahmatullah. Yes, they are ready. So when I open them, everyone will receive a notification on the screen and it will have an option um, to join the breakout rooms. So make sure you click on it as soon as possible. Otherwise, the notification will disappear. If that happens, there will be an icon on your screen which looks like a window. If you click on that, it will show you which room you have been assigned to and you should be able to join your breakout room from there as well. So I'll open it now. Jazakumullah. Welcome back, everybody. I hope your first breakout room session was helpful. Uh, I hope you were able to practice as much as you could to the best of your ability. I know the people I had in my breakout room session tried really, really hard. Um, and I'm very, very sure that you all did the same. To anyone that wasn't called to the mic, I do apologize, inshallah, in your next upcoming sessions, we will try our best to call you to the mic and give priority to your recitation. Um, but as we've been doing every day, there's always a homework set out. Um, Fridays, our homework is slightly different, actually, because all we ask you to do is really and truly just practice um, the, the surah and practice the verse number, uh, the the verses that we go through um, during the course of this week or the week that you would have gone through. So it's literally your homework is just to go through verses 1 to 23 of chapter 26, okay? And another thing I was pointing out in my breakout room was it's a very good top tip to understand everything a lot more is if you, for example, this week you went through short vowels, long vowels, and then veen. So when you're reciting the Holy, the Holy Quran, try and point out where you can see a fatha, where you can see a kasra, where you can see a dhammatain per se, and try and remember how long you should prolong that letter for, okay? That's a very, very good way of understanding um, the rules in a bit more depth. But your homework is just to go through chapter 26, verse 1 to 23, and try to apply all your rules that you have learned so far to your recitations. As always, we're going to conclude our class uh, with a closing prayer. So for that, I would like to call a student to the mic. Could I please request student G2650 to unmute themselves? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good too, alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah for asking. Do you want to start off with a'udhu billah and bismillah? And then inshallah, I'll lead you into the recitation, okay? Okay. A'udhu billah and shaitan rajim bismillah rahman rahim. Well done. Allahumma rahamni. Allahumma Humma Rahamni. You don't have to sing it, just say it the way that she's saying it. Rahul. She's trying to copy how you're you kind of. Oh, okay. No worries. Do you want to? Okay, can I recite the surah and you can read the English, okay? So, Allahumma Rahamni Bil Quran Al Azim. And would you like to read the English for me? Yes. Oh Allah, have mercy on me through the Quran, the Great. Well done, Mashallah. That was very nicely recited. Jazakallah for coming to the mic. Jazakallah, Gosha. Jazakallah, Jazakallah, Allah is. Allah is. Allah is. Okay, so that was it for today's class, everybody. We are running a bit over time now, but Jazakallah for attending the class today. Keep practicing and then inshallah, we will meet each other very, very soon in our upcoming classes again. All right. Until then, take care of yourselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.